The Ancient Hero's Aspect is a clothing item that you get after completing all 152 shrines in Tears of the Kingdom. It acts as a full outfit and is, from a lore perspective, very interesting, to say the least. Its description is as follows. This item is said to contain the spirit of a hero who once saved Hyrule. That hero's aura will envelop the wearer. Wearing it and talking to certain NPCs unlocks unique dialogue, all of which strongly hints that this is what the ancient hero depicted in the Calamity Tapestry looked like. His appearance shares aspects with ancient Hylians, Zonai, and Gerudo, yet differs in significant ways from all three. Today, I'm going to break down every detail that I've noticed and what they could mean. So first off, his entire outfit, with the exception of like his hair, matches the Zonite set exactly. That set is said to be forged with Zonite and imbued with latent magic that, when worn slash awoken, improves the energy efficiency of Zonite devices. Talk about a mouthful. When worn altogether, it also has very high defense, the same level of the ancient hero's aspect. When you wear the Divine Beast Helms in Tears of the Kingdom while the corresponding sage avatar is present, they will wear the same Zonai helm that their ancient sage ancestor wore. For instance, if you wear the Valdemboras helm while Riju's avatar is present, she will wear the same helm that her ancestor wore. Why are you running? Why are you running? However, there is another secret yet to be uncovered here. When you wear the Zonite headdress around Minoru's construct, it will wear a similar headdress. But you might be thinking, Minoru wasn't a champion, and that headpiece is from the ancient Zonai civilization, not the ancient Sheikah of 10,000 years ago. So here's the thing about that. I think that the Zonite set, which is what the ancient hero wore, is the outfit of a Zonai Hylian champion slash sage, specifically the one in the position of the hero. In Breath of the Wild, all four champions were gifted sacred blue cloths symbolizing their positions as the chosen Divine Beast pilots. Link received one as well, except his was a full-blown tunic, rather than simply a cloth attached to one's outfit. I always understood this to be indicating that he was not a regular champion, but the hero, who acted as an avatar of sorts, being able to enter and pilot any of the Divine Beasts. The ancient hero who fought the Calamity would likely share a similar status. He'd receive a champion's cloth, but perhaps as a full article of clothing. I mean, this might not be significant because the ancient Gerudo Sage and Arbosa both wear their cloths as a top and skirt respectively, but whatever. So, wait, wait a minute. The Gerudo Sage wearing a champion's cloth? What, what are you talking about? Well. I realized that all of the ancient sages were wearing the same cloth in the exact same manner as Breath of the Wild's champions, except theirs had a different design. Instead of this sacred blue color that has been a symbol of the royal family for generations, they are wearing white cloths adorned with golden trim and triangles. This is the style of the Zonai, as we can see with both Raru and Minoru's outfits. The waist guard in the Zonite set and Ancient Hero's outfit shares this exact same design. Now, I know that the idea of the Ancient Hero being some sort of fifth special champion akin to Link is not surprising or relevatory <laughs> at all. But there is some surprising information to be found by examining details like this. When I first saw the Ancient Hero's aspect, one thing that confused me was that if he was a Zonai, how could he have been the princess's appointed knight? After all, we know, or can heavily speculate, that every single hero link in the Legend of Zelda series was the descendant of the Knights of Hyrule. A character in A Link to the Past states this blatantly. Only a person of the Knights of Hyrule who protected the royalty of Hylia can become the hero. You are of their bloodline, aren't you? And additionally, while not always considered a 100% reliable source for Zelda lore, a Hyrule Historia on page 93 states, The Knights of Hyrule are a clan that protect the royal family. Their members descended from the hero who governed the Crest of Courage. Legend has it that the hero will one day reappear within their ranks. 
So, how is this red-headed Sonai guy the hero? Of course, Nintendo could simply be going a different route in this instance, making the ancient hero the exception to this apparent rule of who is chosen to wield the Master Sword. However, I realize that even more likely than not, he probably was a Hyrulean Royal Knight. And here is why. In Zelda's memories, we see these guys seemingly protecting the first king and queen of Hyrule. They wear the same outfits that Link gets on the Great Sky Island, with an additional headdress. When I first saw these guys in the Elite Dark book, I wondered if they were average Zonai men wearing typical male garb of their time. Now, I know that they were actually Hylian royal guards. Before I had any context behind the Zonite set, ancient Hylian guards, newborn kingdom of Hyrule, etc., I had already picked up on the fact that the Zonite set looked like a more elite, high-status version of those guys' outfits. Their outfits are adorned with brown stones and white feathers, whereas the Zonite set has brilliant green stones, gold detailing, and red feathers. I had also studied Sonya, Rauru, and Zelda's outfits very closely in the past, and recognized how these things indicated status. For instance, Although Zelda's dress appears to be identical to Sonya's, it actually has lighter brown and green stones, less stones overall, and a green sash rather than a deep blue one. It's also missing a red cloth under the dress that Sonya has. After all, we can see that Sonya's deep blue sash and red cloth perfectly matches the blue and red banners seen in the throne room of their time, indicating that she is the queen. Now, I think that the Zonite set may have been worn by royal knights, such as one chosen as a princess's appointed knight. And there is even more evidence to back this idea up that goes beyond the clothing itself, the hero's skin markings. All of the ancient Hylian guards and Sonya had white markings or tattoos on their skin, seemingly indicating position. Sonya's included those of the guards, with significantly more. Hers also had full eye symbols, the Triforce, and more. The eye symbols especially are important to note here. The ancient hero had markings similar to the guards, yet more complex, including eye symbols on the shoulders, just like Sonya's. Now, I don't think this meant that he was the king or anything, as his still seemed lesser than hers, but they were definitely above the other guards. As for the rest of his appearance, I, I don't know what to make of it exactly. I mean, due to likely being a knight, he probably had some Hylian genes, but he also clearly had something entirely different as well. If I were to throw out a completely speculative theory regarding his genes, I would say, first off, the greenish skin reminds me more of the Twi'le than Zonai or anyone else. Same goes for his furry ears, which resemble Midna's, when in her smaller form. Although, we don't exactly know what any of the other Twi'le's ears look like. He also has red hair, rather than white, like the rest of the Zonai. So, I think that there may have been a branch of the Zonai who split off at some point, and dwelt primarily in the Pharaoh region. These guys are what us theorists like to call the Ferranis Zonai. <laughs> they may have shared genes or traits with the Sheikah and or Gerudo, giving them probably yellow to red hair, and were strong magic wielders with an affinity for power. Perhaps some of them tried to achieve dominion over the realm, and were subsequently sealed away into another realm. One of Twilight, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Perhaps there were still members of this group in Hyrule who, you know, weren't sealed, however, and perhaps they continued on while associating themselves with Hylians and the Light. What was left of them may have been the ancestors of this ancient hero. The point of this video was to examine details about the outfit and skin markings, not necessarily to speculate as to the origin of the hero, but it felt necessary to at least include something mentioning his unusual appearance. That part, I am much less certain on, 
but I'm definitely pretty solid on the outfit details and all. So yeah, this has been my first Zelda Theory video. Very exciting. Happy to share my thoughts. And if you have anything else to share or any theories or thoughts, please let me know in the comments. I would be happy to hear from you. And with that, goodbye and have a good day.